Baptism is about new life as we share in Jesus' death and resurrection, and then we seek to grow in that new life. The Holy Spirit works uniquely at different times in our lives. We're all a work in progress. True prayer isn't a flight from reality, but leads us more deeply into the truth as wherever we are in life, we open our hearts, minds, and lives to the love of God and move forward in hope. See the possibilities when we strive to live lives of intentional faith. I have come to set the earth on fire and how I wish it were already blazing. Did the fire of Jesus set in you? Did that fire that do not burn but purify and fill us with joy, did that fire is set in us? That's why we are here, to praise Him, to thank Him, to be together as a family. Christmas break of my freshman year in college, I was challenged to go uh, by my dad to a conference. Ended up being a tremendous blessing. It's pretty rare to see young people on fire for their faith. I wanted that. I wanted that joy. Prayer wasn't really a big deal. It's I didn't really do it. That's that's the thing. I was always just involved in sports and work and just trying to get ahead. Just kind of forgot the important things. It was more just a slow discovery through the witness of my friends who were joyful, who I could tell knew something that I didn't, um, and I wanted that. I had to make a decision on my own. When my dad was passing, my sister and I went with him and said the rosary out loud, and he responded some. But when we finished, he asked us, he said, do you know how many rosaries I've prayed in my life? He was a prayer warrior, so I said thousands. And he said, not enough. I think that he was saying, this should be your priority. I was blessed with parents who loved me unconditionally, but still, sometimes I think my worth in God's eyes is limited by what I do or don't do. He wants me to be my best self, so I need to continue to try to improve, but He loves me right now. The busyness and trying to project that perfect image is very much a way to hide, because it's hard to go deep. I don't want to show those parts to anybody. I don't even want to look at them for myself. What's really speaking to me right now is getting to know God through the silence. There's so much noise in this world, and it's so easy to not hear Him or to not be aware. The world is messed up and the church is struggling, but I have to encounter Him right now. It doesn't all depend on me. We moved to Platt City in 2015, so we've been here for four years. It was important for our kids to go to Catholic school. So we are registered parishioners and tied at both St. Therese and also 12 Apostles. I've questioned and I've doubted in my lifetime, could this really be him? Could this really be real? Because it is all too good to be true sometimes. I can't deny that he's been with me throughout my life. Just sitting in his presence for a few minutes gives me a peace that I can't find anywhere else. Teaching them that prayer is just a conversation with God. All they need to do is just tell Jesus what's on their hearts. I just want them to know they're loved by their imperfect parents, but also by their perfect Father in Heaven. That we gave them the most important part of our lives, which is our faith, and hopefully they'll hang on to that. My mom is part of the reason why I have such a big devotion to Our Lady. One of my earliest memories and one of my favorite memories is her setting me up on her kitchen counter, making lunch, and she was teaching me the Hail Mary. 
saying the rosary every night together as a family is just something that's been passed down from my grandfather to my father. The fact that me and my brother haven't strayed from our faith has been by the grace of God and I know that's because of all the sacrifices and all the prayers that my parents and even my grandparents have made. I had epilepsy starting when I was four or five. We went to a retreat and they told my parents to start blessing me and my brother every day. My epilepsy kind of went away by itself by the time I was seven. Parents are the most important people in leading their kids to God. You may not see the fruits of your prayers, but in the end, your children are in the hands of God. My wife is Sally, and I had six children. Five of them graduated from St. Mary's High School. The youngest one graduated from Rockers High School. My wife taught kindergarten for like 30 years. She got sick in 13, and she passed away in 16. We were married 57 years. Well, I pray for her every day. Prayers are answered, and then the questions are usually answered. Sometimes it takes a little while to realize that they have been. I had a dream. Sally was following me and I said, this road's awful slick, I hope she's careful. And well, I look and she slid down the hill. And so I slide down the hill and get there and there's a couple of people dressed in black putting out the fire and she looked kind of smoky herself. I turned around and she was gone. And I thought that was a blessed mother letting me know that she was out of purgatory. It wasn't long after that I had a dream. I walked into the garden, the most beautiful garden there you ever saw. And I said, well, Sally's in heaven. The good Lord knows what we need. Our prayers are answered. Sometimes we have to be very patient. You gotta say thank you. When I come to church before I ask for anything, I thank the Lord for what he's given me. You know, I have a lot of trust. He's taken care of me 81 years. Our job is to help people get to heaven. We make friends and we work together towards our final rewards. And so that's what we're doing now. When I came four years ago for business, I told my wife that I felt the call for something that God wants us to do, but He wants us to be together as a family. So we were willing to initiate this praying group. There is a lot of groups for men only, for women only. There is very few that is the whole family. That's the way that we can support each other. Sometimes when I look at the Holy Eucharist and the cross, I see that he was suffering and he suffered more today because we are away from him. And I've been saying to my little ones and my family and my brothers and sisters, whatever you are doing, do it with your heart and do it for him. Do not be afraid, go for it. This past year was the first time I really gave God everything. Once you submit yourself to God, you have no idea where he's gonna take you and I wouldn't be going to seminary if I just thought that the Eucharist was just a piece of bread. It's Him. If we knew what God's plan for our life was, we'd run to Him and wrap our arms around Him. Take advantage of what we have here at St. Therese. Don't be afraid to give more of yourself to Him.